56. We will read that in a moment. Every time we worship God, we ought to be doing it because we want to. Worship isn't properly done if we're just doing it as a routine or going through the motions. Worship should be the highlight of our Sunday. It should be what puts a pep in our step. The reason we accidentally go five over the speed limit, the, the day we only need one cup of coffee. Now, let us read Acts 2.46. The Bible reads, Day by day, continuing one mind in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they were taking their meals together with gladness and sincerity of heart. Let's take a quick look again at those last five words. Gladness and sincerity of heart. What that is saying is that every time you worship God should be the time you have that pep in your step. You're humming your favorite songs and you're wearing a bright smile on your face because you get to worship God. And as much as I would like to say that is me every Sunday, I fall short of the first century church, especially when I hear Brother Tyler is preaching. Now, I would like to ask you about your spirit during worship. When was the last time you smiled widely when you sang? When was the last time you sang loudly? Not because you sounded pretty, but because you were really into it. When was the last time you were so moved by a lesson that you decided to do something that you don't normally do or change something in your life? The reason I'm asking these questions is because these are things we, ought sh we, sh we should ought to be doing every Sunday. Every time we sing, we ought to be feeling it. We ought to be really in it. James 5.13 and 1 Corinthians 14.15. Every time we hear a lesson, we ought to grow spiritually and be able to enrich our spiritual lives or help someone else's. I say all of this to introduce my theme for tonight, putting some spirit in being spiritual. My first point I'd like to consider is our spirit in the Lord's Supper. What should we be thinking? What are we promised? The Lord's Supper should serve as a wonderful promise of Jesus' second coming, 1 Corinthians 11.26, where the Bible tells us that whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The Lord's Supper should also serve as a serious reminder of what our Savior went through for us to have the promise of heaven. After all, the Lord's Supper is for baptized believers for a reason. It allows us to remember what we have been promised and what had to happen for that promise. And it gives us an opportunity to dwell on that promise and what we can do to further fulfill our end of the bargain. My second point I would like to consider is our spirit when we sing. Singing is a vital part of our service. After all, the Bible has a songbook in it, and it just so happens to be the longest book in the Bible. What is acceptable singing to the Lord? What should we gain from it? The Lord wants us to sing with passion and know what we are singing. 1 Corinthians 14, 15, where Paul says, I will sing with my spirit, but I will also sing with my understanding. The Lord wants us to sing, and he put a source of teaching and edifying one another in singing. Colossians 3, 16, where the Bible tells that we should let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another through all wisdom, through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. Singing can be used also to make requests to God, Philippians 4, 6, where the Bible tells us to not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. My third and final point I would like to consider is our spirit when we hear a sermon. Preaching is vital to the spreading of God's word and is a commandment from Jesus, Matthew 28, 19. Why should we listen to the lesson? What can we gain from these sermons? We should always listen to what is being said as it can help us in our spiritual lives. It is important that we pursue a growing faith Romans 10:17, and in that, in that we implement lessons we hear into our lives. After all, we in the pulpit don't write sermons just for our benefit, 
These sermons are for the benefit of you and us. Sermons are also a useful way to study God's word and that they mention scripture, which can always be looked up and read as we did with Acts 2.46 a few moments ago. Sermons are also relevant in our everyday lives and can be applied within them. Take my message tonight, for example. Let us consider quickly how we can apply it in our lives. We can do at least two things different in our lives. For one, as we sing, we can read and understand the lyrics as we can be taught small but powerful lessons by these songs. A second different thing we can do is to apply the sermons we hear. Even if we make a tiny change in our lives because of it, we still did something to help our walk in Christ. As a matter of fact, you are most likely doing it right now as you think about doing it. You are already getting better. Your walk with Christ is already improving. So tonight, as we wrap up our thoughts, I have a challenge I'd like to pose to you, one that we can do in just a few seconds. As we sing the invitation, read the lyrics as you sing them. Listen to the words as they come out of your mouth. Let the words teach you the lesson that is within them. So, if you feel like you haven't been spiritual enough in your worship, or have a desire to put on our Lord Jesus Christ in baptism, or have any other need, please don't hesitate and come forward as we stand and sing.